Good evening, YouTube family. Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight. I am super excited to share with you that I have finished Lake Texoma. It took me forever, guys. It really did. It took me several hours. I was just pulling my hair out. I was almost done doing lake breakdowns. This one drove me like to insanity, but I'm glad that I got it done. I'm super happy. We have over 230 offshore spots. I think over 500 uh, or so Google waypoints. So we're talking getting close to a thousand different waypoints on this lake. Actually broke it down into nine different zones so we can look at each zone individually. And then what we'll do is on the simplisticfish.square.site where you can go out and get your SD card. I will have that broken out by zone. So you'll just pay per zone as opposed to paying for the entire lake. Uh, the entire lake would get pretty expensive because this one took me a long, long time uh, to complete, like I said. And then also wanted to give you a little bit of insider information. I have been uh, qualified to offer memberships on the YouTube channel, which means what this means for you guys is one, uh, you can just get a general membership for like $2.99. That'll, that'll give you the ability to, to pull for new lake, lake breakdowns, give you some emojis, some special stuff, uh, special access to, uh, to comments and stuff like that. But the second part is if you're really into these lake breakdowns for $24.99 a month, you'll get full access to all the digital files for all the lake breakdowns that we do. So I'm gonna to continue to do these lake breakdowns uh, week after week and, and you know we'll continue to add. We have 20 right now, uh, and we'll continue to add more. So we pretty much have covered a lot of the areas in the DF, a lot of the lakes in the DFW area, but we'll continue to add uh, all the ones we've missed and then we'll just keep spreading out uh, further and further east, west, <clears throat> north and south, wherever you guys take me, I'm ready to go. So anyways, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's talk about Lake Texoma. We're gonna start on zone one. Here we go. All right, as I mentioned in the introduction, there are nine different zones for Lake Texoma. So I'm gonna come over here and just kind of show them to you really quick. I'm gonna deselect everything. We'll just kind of walk them through and then I'll take you back. So this is gonna be zone one. This is what we're gonna focus on today. So we're pretty much gonna focus on the, uh, I guess it would be the south, eastern side of Texoma up, up by the dam. So we'll cover this whole area right up in here, some of these offshore spots as well. We'll cover that for zone one, and then we'll continue to do more videos. We'll do a video for each zone. So zone two is gonna be right here. There's a lot of stuff in that in that arm. So definitely wanted to show you guys that. Zone three is gonna be right up in here, kind of this middle area. Zone four, we're gonna come back over here and hit this side. A lot of good stuff there. Zone five, come up here, see a lot of decent stuff up in here. Wasn't too crazy up in zone five. Zone six, quite a bit of stuff up here, but pretty shallow, um, still looking pretty good. Zone seven is now we're gonna move back down and we're gonna hit zone seven down in here, all these purple ones. There were so many zones, I ran out of colors. Uh, so then we go to zone eight, that's gonna be all this red. So basically anything along this bank line and then we're finally going to finish it up with zone nine, and that's going to be on this side. So you can see we've got tons and tons of markers that are out here uh, for you guys to take a look at. So let's jump into this. Let's look at zone one. I'm going to take out all these other ones just because it'll make my computer run so much faster when I'm not trying to display a thousand different points. And one thing that I do want to talk to you guys about, too, is my hummingbird graphs. I don't know if Lorance or Garmin are the same way, but mine have maximums for the amount of waypoints that I can put in there. So just beware when you're loading these waypoints in, there's a lot of them. So if you were to go out and get the digital files, and let's say that you got all the zones on the digital files, you might tap your graph out um, if you have other waypoints on there. So it's probably, you know, it's best to just get the zones that you want and just load those zones into your graph. I think you're gonna be a lot better off that way and you won't have to manage your waypoints as much. But you might not be a waypoint junkie like me, so that might not even be a problem. I have no idea how many waypoints I had in there, but I definitely hit my max um, after I had loaded in a bunch of them. So let's go ahead and start up here. We're gonna ignore the ones that say marker because what this is, is these are offshore hotspots that I've went out and marked on Navionics and then imported those in. So we're gonna look here, it's gonna be more inland or really things that we can see when the water's been pulled down. And then we're gonna come back with a second video series on the offshore spots, and that's when we'll cover these markers. So you just see these markers here because I brought them in, but once we start to adjust the dates and stuff, they're actually gonna go away because they only show up for 2021 because that's when I created them. 
So on this image, we're just going to go back and really what we're looking for is we're looking to see when the water was drawn back the most. Like when can we see the most on this image? When is it drawn back so much that it just, you know, it gives us the, the exact image that we're looking for. So really, if we get back in here around 2015, um, 2015, 2014, let's take a look real quick and see where it's at. So you can see the best date that we have here really is going to be June of 2014. So we're going to use that as our image to really pull back, um, pull back the water and really kind of look to see what we can uncover here. So we're going to start here for zone one. I'm going to zoom in here to the side. Actually, I'm going to zoom back out so I can show you where I'm at. So I'm right here off of this point, just off the edge of this point. So when it come in here now, Texoma was interesting, right? Because there's some places where there's not very much rock. There's a lot of sand and dirt. And then there's other places where there's nothing but rocks. So you'll see as we go through this lake breakdown, and I talk about this on other lakes, that a lot of times you'll see me marking uh, transition areas. Like if there's a lot of rock, I'll still mark it rock, but it just means that either there's a significant rock pile there or there's something that's different there, uh, such as a transition area or something that's unique. So just because I label that it's rock, they'll go up there and be like, man, the whole thing's got rock. Of course there's rock there. Well, there's something specific about that rock. There's a reason why I marked it there. So just wanted to, to pull that out because you're going to see rock a lot on this lake breakdown, obviously, because there's a lot of it, but sometimes that's really key. You know, right here is a great example. You look in here and it's dirt, right? And sand or whatever you want to call it and dirt and sand over here as well. This rock would probably be a good area for them to push bait fish up onto and things like that. So it's definitely a good area to look. Plus it's the hardest surface that's in this whole entire area. So there rock is really good. Plus it's off of a point. So also when you zoom in here, there's an old boat ramp as well. So I went ahead and marked that. And then what I did is I basically just kind of look through here, right? I'm looking through this sand and dirt and stuff. And I'm seeing, is there anything that's different in here? Is there anything that stands out? Because you know, bass love to cover. Right. And now obviously there's small mouth in here and that's a different ball game as well. But we're talking just for a large mouth. That's really what we're breaking down the lake for. So in this one, we're looking for some type of cover. So bass are going to either take cover by getting up underneath something, um, you know, man-made uh, structure or something like that, you know, or maybe brush piles or uh, anything like that. You know, some type of a cover, whether it be a rock pile, a hanging, hanging, overhanging tree, a bush, stick up, stuff like that. All that good stuff would be covered or they use structure and structure would be, you know, when we go off and we're talking about the offshore hotspots and I tell you about those contour lines. Well, those contour lines essentially are structure. That's the structure of the lake and they hide around that structure. So um, imagine those two things. And so for this one, we're really looking for cover. So where on this area or in this area can the bass relate to where could they find something that they can hide behind or take shelter behind for or to get shade or to ambush fish or whatever it is that you know maybe that they're they're wanting to do so just going to keep going here on this area you'll notice here we see that right we've got sand we've got dirt and then all of a sudden we've got something that's pretty unique for this area so i marked the rock there you've also got some rock all along this little area in here. So just put rock. That's going to be like a shallow dive and crankbait. I don't know if that, if that water's really that, or if that rock's really that far into the water, but it also looks like you might have some stick ups around that rock too. So it could be a little good area to go up and do some flipping and punching and stuff like that. I'm not punching, but flipping. Um, and then I'm going to scroll back over here. I didn't see too much going along with that bank line. Getting down in here though, kind of the same thing we talked about earlier, you know, sand and dirt, Nothing going on for miles, it looks like, except for this one little area. And this one little area has the rocks and the hard spot where they're going to relate to you. So when I was breaking down this lake, one thing that I really noticed is that if you were just pounding the shoreline, you would waste a ton of time here because it's only in specific spots, it seems, on this lake where, where the fish are probably going to relate to. The rest of it looks like just dead areas. Like if I'm looking in here, there's nothing that excites me about fishing right in this area. But if I had to fish in this area, let's say I was forced to because of the wind or whatever, I would come over here and fish these hard spots. And I would just focus on those hard spots and then I'd move over and find the next hard spot. You know, maybe that's the ramp and I'd fish around the ramp and then I'd find the next hard spot. I would not go down this bank line and wait until I got there. I feel like you could waste a ton of time in this lake if you did that. So uh, I don't really know. I've only fished this lake once. 
um, we fished around the marina, so I didn't really get to go out and, and do a lot of exploring or anything like that. I plan to eventually, but uh, Texoma is a huge one, so not sure when I'll get a chance to go up there. So let's keep going down the bank line. You saw that, that boat ramp there. Same thing, a lot of nothing going on right there. But then we get in here, and this looks kind of interesting. So I don't know if this is a rock or whatever it is. So I just put check there. It looks like the top of a rock. There's also another rock pile here that you can see that's pretty good. So again, two real good areas of cover for them. And then there's some laydowns out here too. There's some debris over here and some laydowns here as well. So if we wanted to take a look at this, let's say that we came out there and it was in current day, this is what it would actually look like. So if you pulled up, you'd have no idea. If you're over here looking at this bank, you're like, oh, there's nothing there, man. You'd have no idea there's actually a rock pile right here. And there's a big old rock right here that they can hide around. And there's also two laydowns and some debris over here as well. So these things are awesome when it comes to, uh, to finding good spots to fish and uncovering some of the secret little honey holes that people have they don't want to share with you. Uh, you can definitely uncover them this way if they're close enough to the shoreline and the lake has been drawn down enough. So then moving down here, I was looking off this point, hoping I could find a hard spot off this point or something like that. Didn't really see anything. Obviously long uh, tapering points like that can be good depending on this time of year. Um, so you definitely wouldn't want to ignore that point. And then over here, I just wanted you to check this because Something's going on out here. It's like a, an underwater hump, something like that. But check that out. Also check this too. Looks like the same thing. This one actually looks like it may have a brush pile or something on top of it. So check out that area if you can get out there. And then I'm going to move on back in here. Didn't see too much going along on this bank line. This is what I was talking about earlier. I could see just wasting so much time on some of these bank lines because there's only certain areas where they would really want to get attracted to. So there's a ramp back in here. There's also a ramp over here. And then as I move up here, you've got the sandy and uh, kind of muddy bank line. And then finally you get into some harder spots right in here. So just right around this point and right around that area. Pretty decent little rocky point coming out there. And also some shallow rock in that area too. Then as we get in here, Again, you got your riprap, then you just got sand, nothing. So you could fish in this area and probably catch nothing. And then all of a sudden you get right here and you catch your fish. You'd be like, oh, this is a good bank. You go here, you wouldn't catch anything. You might catch a fish out here, but you'd probably be up here with your boat. So you'd miss that one. And then you go around here, you're like, oh, there's nothing here, nothing here. You catch a fish maybe. Then you think this whole bank line was great when really it was just about three or four spots. So pay attention to these areas because this is very specific, hard spot, soft, soft spot, hard spot, hard spot, right? So I'll quit preaching on that, but just want you guys to pay attention to that because I think this lake could eat you up in time if you didn't manage your time correctly. So then coming down here, we've got riprap. I went ahead and just marked each one of these outcroppings. Um, great ambush spots for them, so I marked each one of them. And I believe there's an old bridge or something that was out here. I put check up here on these, but check those, and we'll talk about some of that stuff on the uh, the offshore stuff as well. Got some riprap here too. Some more riprap and just all those little points. So fish in and around all those points. The dams are always good. You could probably catch smallmouth down there as well. Um, so definitely check out those little areas. Those could be potential small, smaller hot spots within it. The whole dam is a hot spot, but really kind of getting more high percentage hot spot with inside of that dam. So then moving down here, here's your main uh, ramp when you're coming up from our side, from, from from the east side. This would be the first ramp that we could get to. Um, and then we get over in here. Of course, you've got this rock, right? So this rock started, so there's not really a good transition start because it's coming off that dam, then it comes here. It kind of changes a little bit here, the rock does. It's not it's not man-made anymore like kind of that was, or not really man-made rock, but you know what I mean? It wasn't set up by man or man, you know, made by man in that formation. But over here it gets a little bit lighter and then you get back to this ramp but we get back up in here and we get over to a point where we've got a little bit of a transition going on um, you've got a ramp that's out in here you've got some sandy muddy stuff and then a little bit of a rock going on so this area right in here looks good you've also got some potential rock here a little bit of rock there and a ramp and you know this looks different if you look at it in 2021 it looks a lot different so this ramp is actually totally underwater, so you might miss that there's actually a ramp there. And this is pretty shallow up in here, but there's another ramp in here that looks like it's completely submerged too. So I'm going to move us back to 2014 real quick. 
Maybe. Somewhere. Let's just go to April of 2014. So we're going to keep moving over. And then I probably marked some of this on the offshore stuff. Actually, I didn't because I would see those marks. I don't know if we did or not, but we've got these ledges that are right here. So I'm not talking about this ledge. Yeah, you could probably get up there if the water was all the way up against that bank line and they were shallow. They could probably be setting up in those shade lines that you see here. But don't forget and don't overlook these types of spots. So this is really a point, not much of a point, but it's a point. And it's got a pretty nice rock ledge right here. So pretty smooth up on top. That's probably a hard spot, but there's not a lot of chunk rock or anything like that. But if you look here, it changes completely and there's a little bit of a ledge that's going on right here. So this would be a good area to take a look at. Also, when you're up here on that point, come down here and take a look at this ramp. And then you kind of have the same thing going on on this point. You've got that shelf that's right here. There's your break. And then this is where your different kind of rock is going on. So definitely those two points could be good areas to look at. And then hidden back in here, there's actually a little ditch that was made. Now, these ditches were interesting because some of them I didn't even mark because it didn't look like they were worth marking, but then other ones look like they were defined enough that they may be worth checking out. So the other thing that I like about this is if you look right here, there's awesome transition areas all over this lake. There's great ones right here. I mean, this is mud. You got rock, rock. So transition areas on both sides plus a ditch. So good looking area there. And then as we move over here, we kind of got the same type bank line. So I didn't really mark anything for you guys there. But again, a real significant ditch going on back in here too. So you can see it here. I'll zoom in a little bit. There's some pretty good breaks going on in that area. So it might not be a bad area to take a look at. Again, same type thing, rock, mud, rock. So if you could fish right along in this area, these areas, and then around that ditch, you, you might be able to find something in there. All right, so I'm gonna move back over here. And now we get back in to a lot more rocks. So you've got all of this heavier rock here around this marina. Um, you know, I'd say just fish around all the marinas, the docks. I guess this really is, this may be a little marina, just a, maybe just a big dock. But this area looks good right in here. And then also right here where I put TA for transition area. That is a perfect transition area. You can see it. That's just excellent. Uh, plus, this looks like a good area to fish around that point too. So definitely take a look at that stuff. Coming over here, you gotta got the same thing, a little secondary point coming out with the hard hard rock on the outsides of it. So definitely a good spot to look at there. And then back in here, you got sandy, a little bit of rock up on the bank line, but really kind of sandy. And then you finally get back into some rock over here by this boat dock. Decent little creek channel here, but I didn't really see anything that'd be worthy to make you want to go over there and fish it. So I didn't mark that one for you guys. Then I'm going to move over here. We're getting a little bit closer to this big marina. So if we get way back in the back of this marina, this is the boat ramp to uh, to one of the state parks. Um, actually, it's to our state park, I believe. But come back in here, and there's actually a pretty decent ditch going on back in here as well. So I marked it. There's a drainage ditch coming here. And then here's the ditch that it actually creates, which is pretty significant. Um, you can see we've got some pretty decent breaks in there. It all looks, it all looks pretty decent. So I marked it for you there. There's the two ramps that you have as well. And then, of course, this just looks like heaven to me. All these big, huge bow docks um, out there providing all that shade and all that cover for those bass. So you could literally probably spend days just fishing the marinas here. There's so many marinas. Look at all this stuff. And you get out here. The break walls are good. You know, you heard me talk about that. You've also heard me come out here and talk about tires. Um, I don't want to skip over this. This point looks pretty decent to you. But tires are awesome to fish around. So don't ever, don't ever uh, overlook the tires. They could be like the secret thing, you know, the secret sauce. Everybody is back here fishing docks and you're up here flipping tires in a super deep lake and people are like, what are you doing? And you're out there actually, you know, making money, making bank because you're, you're catching the big ones. So don't ignore the tires. I went ahead and marked the tires for you guys. Again, just marinas, city. Not a lot that you could fish around back in here, but just a ton of marinas. So fish around the docks, obviously you can't get to the bank lines. And you've got a ramp back in here. And then as we move around this side, you know, the rocks kind of change here. So notice how we've got uh, some larger rocks and then just kind of some lighter rocks. And then all of a sudden, bam, right there on that point's got a transition area. And then you get into these crazy rocks over here, totally different. But it's only in this one little section from basically about right here 
to about right there. So I went ahead and marked that as rock. And that's what I meant earlier as saying, you know, sometimes I'll mark rock and you'll pull up and say, well, duh, there's rock everywhere. But focus around those points because there's something around those points that was unique to that rock. So here we get out here, all this rock is pretty much the same. Not saying this wouldn't be good. I would love to come out here and just crank down that thing, you know, and just hit all those little spots. So if you wanted to really get get super, super detailed, which I'd blow your graph up with points, I would actually come in here and mark each one of these. There's a point, there's a point, there's a point, and just hit those five minutes here, five minutes here, five minutes there, instead of working my way down the bank line. So then coming over here, a uh, pretty good rocky point here, got a good transition here, plus it's, it's a real good rock point. So I would definitely take a look at that. Coming back in here, just some interesting stuff. You know, right in here, this this again is kind of interesting, right? Nothing on this side, nothing on that side, and all of a sudden you got a rock pile there. That could be decent as well. Coming out here again, just some really good rocks off the point. Would definitely uh, go take a look at that. And then moving up this bank line, you know, a lot of the same thing, just those big, huge rocks. And then you've got those transition areas in almost every one of these little pockets. Um, and then over here, we get up here and we've got some more rocks. So good point here, really good point here, kind of different type of rock. And then as we move further back, a lot of the same type stuff that we're seeing right in here. Then we get back in here and finally I found some brush piles. There's a little bit of brush right back in here. And then some more rock guys, got some rock right here. This looks like a pretty decent pile right in here. So just some pretty big like boulders that are separate. So notice, uh, even though it's rock and yes, there's a lot of rock around it. Notice how there's not any rock like that around it. You know, you could almost, not, I could have almost marked that one too, but I don't think it's far enough in the water, but these are definitely going to be underwater. If we mark that up to, uh, you know, to 2021, those are way out in the water. So uh, definitely good areas to take a look at. So let's move this back. I'm gonna move it back and we're gonna keep going. We're going way back to June of 2014 again. So don't know why it switches back from April to June, but that's all right. So we're gonna keep moving up. A lot of the same type thing. And then all of a sudden the rock changes. You get these bigger boulders that you didn't have back in here. So check these out. These are some really giant ones. And then also come out here and check out that point. That point, because that point could be really good as well. So then to keep moving down you don't see too much going on in here you know that really struck my attention obviously all these docks we want to fish around a lot of those docks and marinas like i talked about definitely in this lake uh, but then moving back down in here let me see if i can get us a little bit better image this one's a little bit i don't think we're going to be able to a little bit crusty come on give me something good maybe 2015 has a good one Nope. So it looks like this is going to be the best one we have is, is June of 2014. You can see here is some brush piles. So I went ahead and marked those. And then moving back in here, pretty decent little ditch, but not a lot of breaks in there. So I didn't really put much in there, but maybe come back here and check depending on the time of year. And then over in here, a good brush pile. You can see that was really obvious. Obviously they put it right there by the dock. And then moving up here, not seeing too much up in that area either. So let's keep moving out. Now, as we get over in here, a little bit of different type of rock, right? Everything was pretty, uh, pretty small rock, stuff like that. Not a lot going on in these, these points. Not saying these points aren't going to be any good. They definitely could be. And we may have even marked some stuff in the offshore stuff in there. Um, but these rocks look good because it's different, right? It goes to sand, the lighter rocks, these, just these four or five chunky rocks that are right here. So this would be a good little point to take a look at. Also out here, just because it's, so again, it's a really rocky point. So those are always good areas to look at. Also here, and then over here, this again is a little bit of a transition area going on. So not a lot going on here. And then you get into this little clump of larger rocks, a little group pile. So something a little bit different. So definitely want to take a look at that. Again, that's off of a point. And the same type of thing over here, you've got nothing where well, you got these little outcroppings of these little piles of rocks really nothing and then you got a big area where these bigger rocks are so definitely look in that area coming down through here didn't see too much going on on that bank line i mean obviously see a lot because of rocks and things but as far as things that are different um, this would be the first thing that i would really say is a lot different from this area so different kind of bank line here and then you can see it's transitioning over so right in this area could be a good area to look at didn't see much going on back in here behind this 
marina, but getting over here, sandy, sandy, and then rock, right? So good area to take a look at. Another good area, transition area again, going from this, whatever this kind of rock is, to basically sand to really lighter type rock. And then you get into this heavier stuff um, off of this point as well. So you can see, I mean, we could have marked a thousand different rocks out here, um, different things like that. It's just, this lake has so much to offer. So take advantage of what I've marked, but don't be scared to kind of get off the beaten path. If you find a certain type of rock that they're attracted to, maybe it's these smaller, like mid-sized boulders as opposed to the huge boulders, then just focus on those types of rocks. So try to just kind of hone it in. This kind of gives you a good starting point of probably where to find them, um, you know, at some point in time, but then you could hone it in and really get good if you really pay attention to the kind of rock and the kind of bottom that you're fishing on and where you're catching them. So then moving in through here, we've got a, a ditch that's not as obvious, but I went ahead and marked it anyways. Got some really good rocky areas right around this dock in this area, whatever this is, power plant thing. And then over here, another good transition area, right? So sandy and then big, huge chunk rocks right in there. So could, if that comes out in here, that would be great because you can have a pretty good line to work off of. We've also got some more rock in here. So basically from that spot to this spot, totally different rock than all this over here. And then if we get over here, just kind of mark just these these couple areas just because they're they're giant and they poke out in front of everything else. Everything else is kind of back here off the, the bank line, but these poke out, both of those do. So I marked both of those. You got those transition areas we talked about again, back in that, those areas. And then over here, you've kind of got another transition area where you're coming off of this bigger, chunkier rock, just this little section right in here, back to kind of getting into that sandier, a little bit calmer, not as crazier type rock patterns right around here. So those areas can be good, especially if they'll, if they'll come out here. So if that, if that, pattern on the, the bottom of the lake. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but if that will stay consistent out here, so you can be out here and you see all the big chunky rock, and then all of a sudden you move about 50 yards through here and all of a sudden it's sandy, that area, that line, wherever that is, that's going to be the line that you want to fish around. So take a look at these. Don't just look at them from the bank perspective, but look at them out here as well. So anyways, just something to think about as you're out here fishing. That actually covers us for all of the waypoints for Google Earth for Zone 1 for Lake Texoma. Um, as I mentioned on the introduction, super excited to share these guys with you. Uh, share this with you guys. Make sure to go out to simplisticfishing.square.site and get your SD card. Hopefully those memberships that we talked about earlier on will be approved soon. I'll be able to offer that to you guys. Uh, you can also go out and get the digital file as well from simplisticfish.square.site. So you have a couple different options that are out there. Until next time, I hope you guys catch your PB. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. We got lots more videos on Texoma coming. Take care, guys.